Hello guys and welcome to a special video. Now, if you remember certain rig, uh, if you remember a few weeks back, um, I had a little bit of a rant about 2BR and their lack of um, attitude to, well, perceived lack of attitude to covering football, especially Burley games at this very ground as you're looking at there. And this is uh, just a little bit of history that the ground that ground was built back in 1883. And uh, that's that was just less than a year after Burley Football Club was actually formed. Now, um, this is an update. Uh, I'm sorry it's taken a good two or three weeks for me to come uh, come back with the update, but um, I will let you know what actually came about. Um, as some of you may already know from listening to my last video about this, uh, my rant. I actually start at work at a. Uh, a boiler breakdown company uh, in Accrington at Clayton Lemoore's and it also happens to be on the same industrial estate in fact very much next door to 2BR's actual studios uh, which they um, which which is quite uh, something anyway I was invited um, as a result of the rant Chairman Baron did get uh, the rant and she fully appreciated what I said and everything else even though it was Excuse me, even though I'd gone about it, probably <laughs> looking back at it, it was a bit of a rant. I was a bit embarrassed by it. Anyway, I went over to the studios in uh, in Clayton Lamores in Accrington, uh, just outside. If anyone knows where Clayton Lamores is, it's just on it's it's near the Duncan House Hotel, and it's off Junction Seven of the M65. Uh, so a little bit of advertising for the Duncan House there. <laughs> yeah, but uh, now that's where I work now, and. Uh, I'd literally just got the job there and so what I do, just a brief tenure on what I do for a living, it's I uh, I ring people up and uh, sell them or try and get them boiler breakdown cover uh, for the um, for, for the obviously central heating boilers and stuff like that. Anyway, enough about my job, let's go get back to the matter in hand. Uh, now, I was invited one lunchtime to go join Gemma and one of their breakfast presenters. Uh, nice guy, I think he was called Tim, I think, or something or other. Very nice chap, actually, and uh, and um, we talked. You know, it was a very good chat. It was not there was nothing malicious in it at all. There was no ranting or no raving. There was no arguing. We were. It was a great. It was a great debate. Gemma was very very welcoming. Gemma Barron, the, the station manager. I hope she's listening to this, by the way. Hello, Gemma, if you're listening or watching uh, this on YouTube, but. Um, she was very very welcoming um she shook my hand and you know she took us up she took me upstairs to the to the boardroom and uh, we had a right good chat about things and uh, and there were certain things that i'd overlooked actually or, or didn't actually realize firstly the amount of uh, firstly the amount of money that goes into actually um, actually doing a radio match now uh, if you're covering a football league or a premier league match um, now, when Bert Tubal used to do the football commentaries um, during the Burnley games, it used to cost them, I think, somewhere in the region between 60, I think off the top of my head, 50 to 90,000 pounds. And and that's the extortion. And this, this is where I'm going to rant on about the Football League and the, and the Premier League and uh, extortionate measures to up the price for radio stations, local radio stations, to cover football games. And I think they should be taking a lot of responsibility. And I hope they're listening here because I think it's vitally important that uh, people can't make the games. Now, this isn't to be our spoke, but what I've gathered, they can't afford to pay £90,000 a show because it's... Cause because they're covering a small area. Now, Burnley and Pendle is a small area, although if you try and burn it into the Pendle area they could create one big city but that's another matter the fact of the matter is 2BR would love to cover the Burnley games they made no secret of that but they found that they found out and they know they've got an audience for football if they want it it's not a question of them wanting it it's a question of them affording to pay for it and I think I think that's a fair comment because if you're a radio station and you've got to try and cater for everybody within means, even housewives and people like that, you've got to try and justify the audience. And if you're spending £90,000 a match on doing football commentaries with a local football team, 
then as a small radio station even though it's paid by commercials and people might say well the advertising paid for it but they actually charge very reasonable rates for their advertising I've seen all the figures and everything um, well there's you know they give me a little bit of figures on it but um, they uh, they gave me some more figures and it's actually very cheap to advertise on TBR so then it just keeps costs down that's why they get so many local advertisers that's why they can advertise local companies and things like that because if the if the um, prices were sky high it'd be national advertising but they're there purely to get local advertising on and some of the local adverts are a little bit annoying but <laughs> but that's one that's one thing you have to endure but um, that said they're a small radio station yes they run by commercials yes it's all this and that and all the other but the fact of the matter is they couldn't afford at the time to lose ninety thousand pounds and in these tough economical times i can quite understand that to be quite honest so because i did raise the point they did they were actually impressed with some of my fifa 15 and 16 commentaries and uh, that i do churn out and they do recognize the fact that um then I'm a very good commentator and I've got potential. Now, what the, what the, what Gemma Baron did for me, she couldn't obviously say that we do Burnley games, and I can understand that it's a lot of money and they've got to cater for everybody, and it's cheaper for them, being a commercial radio station, a small one, to play keep playing music on the loop. I, I do understand that they have to keep costs down, and in these top economical times, it's, it's very bad. But this is a message to the Football League and the Football Association who are pricing local radio stations out of covering their teams every week. Please lower your prices for ma your fees for people to cover football games, for radio stations to cover football games. £90,000 or more or less per game is just too much and you can understand why local commercial radio stations are pulling out because it's just absolutely boring on the ridiculous. So lower your prices, the Football League, the FA or the Premier League. If you want to sell the extortionate amount to TV companies, do so. You know, that's fine. But please, the radio, the local radio, please don't rip them off with extortionate fees of £90,000 a game. I mean, it, I think it costs about three grand to bloody, uh, do a, a football report now. The Football League, I found out, because I tried to cover a game once at Aki Stanley for a radio. Well, an online community radio station that had opened up in Cambridge. Cambridge had gone up uh, to uh, to uh, to the uh, Crown Ground to play Accrington. I was working for a, a, a radio station called Star Radio, which Barry Swain used to present a sports show. And he wanted me to cover the game up north between Accrington and... Uh, and Cambridge and when I went for a press pass the media manager Jan Jewell explained to me that it was two grand to actually do the um, do the reporting it would cost the radio station two grand and obviously they didn't have the advertisers then to do that so I ended up having to I ended up having to stand in the rain in the open terrace behind one of the goals to actually get my reports through to Barry and Carl Bates who ran the who ran the program and it was probably the worst harrowing experience in my federal journalism career and I was just glad to get home and into the warmth that night and it was last November when it happened so the Football League, the FA come on stop offering extortionate sums of money for radio stations to trans transmit commentaries of football games at uh, local ones because it's ridiculous however I'd like to I'd like to offer my services as a commentator to any potential broadcasters looking in. You've got if you look at any of my videos I do on YouTube on FIFA 16, I try and do them as realistically as possible. The commentaries, I try and use the real life managers as well from opposition teams, and and obviously use as far as history is concerned. I always use real life history as well with some of my commentaries because I think it's right, and it it sounds more professional. So if uh, BBC Radio Lancashire are looking in or any of the BBC radio stations up and down the north of England, whether it's Radio Leeds, Radio Manchester, Radio Merseyside, I can travel to any of those places. I'm working now during the week. If you want a commentator up north or if any of the southern BBC local radio stations need to have uh, any of the London teams coming up north and need a northern-based commentator, I would be only too happy to help you out. 
I will, you know, I'd like anyone, I will send a link to everybody on Twitter. I'll get Barry Swain, who's a friend of mine, to promote it for me. And if there's anybody who needs an open commentator who would like to ring me, or would like to give me a call, leave me a message on Twitter, and I will, I will gladly sort something out as regards all that. Uh, but if honestly, if, if there's any of the radio stations down south, Radio London, Radio Bedford, Radio Bristol, or wherever, you know, and, and there's and there's English, you know, and there's teams coming up north, please drop us a line. Okay, well that's it for me then. I just thought it was better to give you a quick update. I know it's been a couple, two or three weeks since the meeting, but as I say. If there's anybody out there from any of the radio stations down south or, or a northern based one like Lancashire or Manchester or Merseyside who'd like to give me a job as a commentator or as a reporter, you know, I'd be more than happy to hear from you uh, as regards that because I'm very keen to get in the business and I really want to do this as a career. Not just a hobby, but as a career. Okay, well, thank you very much for your time. I'm going to put this on YouTube and I also I'm going to uh, link it on Twitter as well. Thank you very much for watching and for listening, and I'll see you very, and I'll speak to you soon. But oh, by the way, the FIFA 16 uploads, I'll continue it straight away. I've got a whole heap of them to upload in the next week or so. So watch this space, YouTubers, because we're because on my FIFA 16 career mode, we're now back in the Premier League now for next season. We're just in the middle of uploading some international games from the European Championships with England. I've done four games. I've seen two of them, of course. Uh, but um, but you'll enjoy the you'll enjoy the Euro matches and especially especially a certain game against Germany. Anyway, that's it from me. Thank you very much indeed, as I say, for watching, and we'll and stick around for all the um, FIFA 16 uploads I have editing at the moment, and I will get them all uploaded as soon as possible. Well, thank you very much for your for your time and your patience, and we'll speak to you soon. Take care. Bye bye, and thank you.